Welcome to the Great Show of Greyhounds. My name is Brian. And I'm Heather. And we're having you all over for dinner. You ready? Yeah, you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Okay, good job. Yeah, are you excited? Oh, why are you? Heather, what is it that you look for in the list of ingredients when you're picking out a dog food? The most important thing for greyhounds is that corn is one of the top five ingredients. They don't really handle corn and grains all that well. But I find, especially with ours, that the grain free is better. Some people do find with grain, it kind of depends on your dog, so you can experiment a little bit with how that is. But just making sure, again, that that corn isn't one of the top five ingredients is pretty much the most important part. I think we've noticed that the less wheat and grain that's in our dog's food tends to work a lot better for their stomachs. Yep, absolutely. It doesn't take a whole lot to upset a greyhound stomach. When you adopt a greyhound, uh, how do I put this delicately, uh, loose stool is going to be part of the deal. It's a little asterisk in the fine print. When our dogs need a fiber boost, we many times put a scoop of pumpkin in with their food. Not pumpkin mix, because that has sugar in it and probably will make the situation even worse. Just plain pumpkin. Since we have three grays and sometimes we're fostering a fourth, we have to keep a fairly stocked cupboard full of canned pumpkin. Aldi has a great sale on it the week after Thanksgiving, and that's when we load up on a year's supply. Are you taking pictures of us? Turning off all the pumpkin. Yep. You're a pain. <laughs> You'll notice that we have their food and water bowls raised off of the floor. We've got them up on totes, but a step stool or something of similar height works for us just as well. Doing this makes consumption of food and water easier so that they do not have to strain their necks or bodies to get their mouths down to floor level. It has been explained to us that such an awkward posture while eating or drinking off of the floor could cause bloat, or technically known as gastric... I don't even know how to say this. Uh... Dilatation and full or more technically known as gastric dilatation and vulvulus. Um, vulvulus? Pronunciation. It can be an issue with deep chested dogs like greyhounds or uh, German shepherds. Gastric dilatation is where the stomach becomes bloated with gases and the vulvulus, vulvulus, whatever is where that bloated stomach becomes twisted and then starts pinching off normal blood flow. This is a serious thing and can kill your dog in a shockingly short amount of time. If this happens, you need to get to the vet immediately. We try not to let our dogs run around excessively before or after eating or drinking a lot. That way we avoid a lot of heavy breathing during consumption and it allows time for the stomachs to settle if they got jostled around too much. Of course, while researching for this episode, I found that some studies would suggest that having the raised food bowls allows the dogs next to level out so they can breathe faster while they're gulping down food also faster, which then causes the bloat that you're trying to avoid in the first place. So, I don't know. The adoption group that we get our grays from and sometimes foster for prefer that we use the raised food bowls, so that's what we do. We have found that that added efficiency is certainly present with our two boys. They gulp food down so fast. A way to slow them down is to add water into their food bowls. We've also been told that adding a tennis ball or maybe a bone or something that they'd have to move around will also help slow them down when they're eating. And if your dog is just an unstoppable black hole that sucks in food, then they make these bowls that are like a maze that basically requires licking kibble out of almost one at a time. And now it's time for this episode's photo finish. This is a picture of our food and water bowl setup that our greyhounds use when they're eating and drinking. I encourage all of you to post pictures of your food and water bowl setups so that everyone watching can learn by all of your great examples. Thank you very much for watching. I invite you to rate this episode, share it on social media with your friends, and subscribe to this YouTube channel using this link over here. Subscriptions can help fuel future episodes. Over on this side of the screen, you'll find links to the previous and the next episodes of The Great Show, in which we'll be discussing the greyhound's prey drive and how that fits into your home when you adopt them. See you later. Have a great day.